Hey Meg Toes, this is Vention. Just trying out a new cell phone that I just recently got. This one can be rooted so I can actually put a uh, decent firewall and good encryption into it. So uh, I won't be uh, concerned about going to Mexico or anywhere else um, this way. I just wanted to bring you up to speed. <clears throat> I got the results of my next, my most recent CEA test and it has tripled. But the thing is, I am not counting or I'm not confident in the uh, value that a CEA test has for somebody in my situation. <clears throat> what I'm doing is something that's very unusual. Most people don't dare to do this. Um, most people take their chemo and have the doctors cut the tumors out. Uh, but me, I'm... Uh, I'm doing the fasting and the supplements and uh, the low carb, and I'm attempting to melt the tumor away without having to be opened up <laughs> or poisoned to death. So um, basically what happens then is when you're killing blood ce uh, cancer cells, they drop into the bloodstream and that elevates your CEA test, and it's going to be pretty constant because there's a lot of cells in a tumor and uh, if you're going to melt that thing away you're going to be dumping a lot of garbage into your bloodstream and if it's and if your uh, however if your uh, system is so unfriendly to cancer that you're killing that much cancer cells the chance of metastasizing is uh, in my diesel mechanic opinion very low so so most recently, just the other day, in fact yesterday, I was kind of discouraged because I uh, I was hoping for a lower test because over over the two year or the, the year that I've been doing this, the uh, CEA test has gone slowly from five all the way up to uh, fifty, and then it dropped to forty five, and I thought, yeah, I'm beating it. But uh, then, just recently, it went up to 153. So it's like, a scary number. But nothing has really changed in that respect, although I'm changing my strategy. <clears throat> so basically, what I'm, what I'm thinking is that the value of a CEA test for working on your cancer as I am... Um, is very limited. I think that it's just not dependable. Uh, it might be dependable for somebody who uh, who is like taking their chemo and uh, having them cut them and eating the normal American di diet, but uh, I don't think that it's valuable in my situation. That said, I'm now shopping around for a place where I can get a PET scan because that's the only way you can really know um, uh, really know the vet you know, how, how you're doing. They're, otherwise, you're just guessing. And I'm of the opinion that the CEA test isn't, isn't valuable at all. Now, when I first started this video, I took a, I was taking a, about five seconds of my old computer chair that I used to have back, that I used to use all the time back in 2016. Now, it's my opinion that I have had cancer metastasized to my from my colon to my liver all the way back as far as 2016. And that is because I was feeling this weird poking sensation in my back. And then, uh, and then basically, um, and it was driving me crazy. So I ended up cutting into the chair looking for what it was. And I never found anything. Nothing was there. The problem was in my back. And that's right where my liver is. And it's my opinion that the liver tumor was a lot bigger than it once was at one time or a lot bigger when it was dis than when it was discovered at one time uh, because you, the the glowing spot on the tumor is actually quite small but then there's this big void around it and it looks like uh, the tumor used to be a good deal bigger than it was uh, a year ago when I got this uh, when I started this adventure so, um, what I've done today is uh, I decided to just go full bore into a dry fast. And that's where you don't drink any water, you don't have any coffee, you don't have any breakfast, <laughs> and, uh, 
and uh, I'm feeling a little debilitated, but uh, I felt good enough today because I'm going to be feeling worse in a day or so. Um, but while I was feeling good, I figured I'd make a run uh, and find myself a, a nice, comfortable office chair because I'm going to be spending a lot of time in it while I'm fasting. So also there was another thing that I'd like to put out there in that that my back in at the beginning of 2019 when my cancer was discovered it was discovered that it had already metastasized to the liver right and yet my CEA test was 5 so what that is telling me is that uh, what that is telling me in my diesel mechanic opinion is that the cancer was once a lot worse than it was when it was discovered. Uh, I, I had already started taking uh, vitamin B17, uh, the apricot pit extract, and I had already started going low carb uh, back as far as 2016, and I was feeling better as a result, and I think that might be part of why the cancer wasn't showing symptoms and why it wasn't dumping cancer cells into the bloodstream. And that is the only way for the CEA test to show up is for those cancer cells to be dying and dumping, dumping uh, wreckage, cellular wreckage into your bloodstream. But at that time, uh, at the beginning of 2019, my cancer cells were all happy as can be, and they were totally healthy and just just enjoying the environment and all the sugar I was feeding it because I was feeding it sugar sometimes but um, yeah I'm gonna stop doing I stopped doing that um, but in any case um, then while I started going doing the fasting and taking all the supplements and the mega doses of vitamin C and the vitamin C Megadose IV treatments, um, I was killing those cancer cells and that was causing the tumors to get less and less help, healthy, more irritated and started and they started dying and shrinking and dumping cells into the bloodstream, causing the CEA test to be elevated. And more recently I've been using, uh, as well as I've been using the mega doses of vitamin C, I've been using the pectisol, and I've been using the uh, the uh, um, the uh, it's like a pet dog worming medication. It starts with an F, and I use the brand name called Paniker, and it's uh, I take uh, 500 milligrams of that every day. So it's my opinion that I'm making progress on this cancer, but my CEA test is elevated. It is kind of scary, so over the, the next few days I'm going to be taking a dry fast. I feel like shit today. I uh, have a no caffeine headache going, um, and I'm going to probably uh, not be very happy for the next day or two. Um, I'm not sure how long a dry fast, how long you're supposed to do it, but uh, um, I will uh, let you know. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be researching that too, but I figured I might as well get started, even though I don't know a lot yet. So I bought that nice new computer chair and it's very uh, comfy and I'll be sitting in it a lot while I'm sitting here debilitated um, with this dry fast. And then Monday I'm going to be heading into uh, to the cancer clinic to get another vitamin C megadose IV and I'm going to... I'm, I'm at war, gentlemen. <laughs> um, it's necessary for me to make my body a very unfriendly place for cancer. And also, um, I have an inquiry in, in, a, in a couple of two different places, one in Mexico, but there's another place in Washington State that actually provides low-dose chemo, which is sugar-targeted. They bond the chemo to the sugar, and then they inject it in a fasted state like I am now, and then your cancer cells suck it up and explode, kind of like the vitamin C treatment. And there's also uh, a lot of good info on combining the vitamin C mega doses with the low-dose chemo, and you get like a synergistic additional 
dramatic effect and they and it has gotten very good reviews and I am shopping around to do that. So gentlemen, that's about all I got for you and don't get married. Oh, and don't get cancer either. About the same thing. <laughs>